Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So today we're going to be doing some experimenting with the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill. So let's go on ahead and have a look. All right, so we're gonna start off with a little bit of an unboxing. I've had this for a little while now. I've been playing with it to try and get a handle on it. I'm still not, haven't got a handle on it, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. So this is the fine tip heat pen. There is also a medium and a wide tip. I think that's what it's called. Um, and so you can use it basically to use your Cricut or your Silhouette or any kind of your machines to add foil to your projects. Now, obviously I've been playing with adding foil to things for a while. So this was always going to appeal to me. But like I said, I, I haven't played with this as often as I should have. So I haven't got the best handle on it. So I'm gonna do my best here. So in the unboxing, you start off with you've got six pieces in here. You've got your actual foil quill itself, which has got this little USB thing on the end. Um, the, the other two sizes have different um, colors of these barrels so that you can tell the difference. And then you've got all your adapters. So you've got A is for, I think A is for Silhouette, B is for Brother, C is for Cricut, and D is for Sizzix. So because we're using the Cricut, we're gonna grab the C nozzle out. I'm also gonna grab this little thing. This is the heat protector tool. So it's supposed to protect your machine from the heat once you've actually got it plugged in. So I'll bring my Cricut in. I've taken it out of its spot so it's sitting here on the desk. So I'm gonna give this the best shot I possibly can. Uh, so I'm gonna open her up. The quill needs to go into slot A. So obviously this is all for Cricut because I'm using a Cricut machine. If you do have a silhouette machine, you can find heaps and heaps and heaps of other videos uh, online uh, that you can sort of show how to set this up. So you need to remove this little bit first and then you need to get your little adapter, screw it onto this bit here Put it back in here and close this off. It's actually really simple. It's just you kind of need three hands, which I don't have. <laughs> so that's in. I'm just going to spin this round. So you just have to lock it in there. It just sits, like you'll tell where it sits. It's actually really easy to work it out. Then you need to plug this in. Now my maker actually comes with a little USB on the side here move this over so it's actually in shot. Uh, has a little USB thing here on the side which makes this really easy. And then you can see the light goes on once it's plugged in. So that's sort of how you know that this is heating up. This is the part where you get your little metal thing. Whoops, this is when I can tell I've got this down too low. So I'm just gonna put that back in there. And that's just gonna sit there. It's just, it's just there to protect it, it's nothing else. So while that's doing that, and I'm just gonna close this up so that I can use my desk space, we're gonna do a bunch of experiments on a bunch of different things. So this comes with its own, it doesn't come with, but you can buy it. This is the foil quill, uh, foil sheets, obviously designed to work with the foil quill. But what I wanna see is actually, does it work with some of my other foils? So I'm gonna be doing a, a bit of, uh, well, a whole kind of experiment thing here. So I'm going to start by grabbing my standard grip mat. What I've been finding is that the light stick one, which is the blue one, doesn't hold this down enough. And that the green one, my new green one, almost holds it too much. This is a really old and dirty one, you can tell. Um, so this is the one I've been using and it's working reasonably well at the moment. So I'm just going to remove the plastic. Like I said, she's a bit dirty, so that's okay. And we're gonna try this on a bunch of different papers. So I have some white cardboard. I have some vellum. I have some uh, drawing paper, which is the really nice drawing paper I like to use. I have some plain white copy paper. I have some acetate and I have some black paper. This is going to take a little while because we're gonna try this on all of them. So thankfully, <laughs> thankfully there's no printing involved. So that makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna start off with the white plain copy paper. And I'm gonna speed, I'll do this first one so you can see how I stick it all down. But for the next couple, I'm going to deliberately speed through it because it's really not that hard. So I'm just sticking that down. I'm making sure it's got a good grip there. And then on my design space, I've already got my project all set up. This is just a leaf that I've got out of the Cricut store. It's nothing particularly fancy, but it gives me enough detail to be able to show you guys 
sort of what it can do but at the same time it's not complicated that it's going to sit here all day so I've got four of these deliberately got four because I've got four different kinds of foil to try and I've got them spaced out so that it's really easy for me to put the strips of uh, foil down so we'll jump back to my um, back to my mat so we'll grab the the different kinds of foil so I'm just grabbing a color I'm not paying any attention to actually what color it is uh, so I've got the rose gold one to start with and I'm just going to trim this down so that it is sort of two inches across now for whatever reason my scissors don't work particularly well with this foil I've been finding I don't know why but it's not so that's okay so I'm just going to lay that there for now. I'm then going to grab my deco foil. These are all heat reactive foils, so I can't see why they won't work, but they're also obviously not designed for it. So there is not a chance that it won't. See, scissors work fine with this one. Then got my go press foil. So the heat reactive couture creations one. we've got some mink foil as well so I'm just gonna make sure that these are sort of all in the right spot and the trick to making sure that you get a really good foil is making sure every single bit of foil is stuck so you need a lot of washi tape for this so I'm just using any kind of I use cheap washi so that I don't feel so bad about wasting it so then you need to stick it down. You need to try if you can to get as you need to get it to, so that it'll actually stay, but then at the same time you don't want it in the way. So you just want to sort of get it on the edges. If you can do four of the edges, that's better, but you don't have to. I find that if if I can possibly do four, I will. Because we're only experimenting and this project isn't supposed to be fantastic I'm not panicking too much if I don't get this like, the complete kind of um, what's what I'm looking for don't get this completely right or if I don't get each leaf itself actually done right there's a bit of overhap overhang that was the word I was looking for that's okay because this is like just an experiment but obviously if I was doing this for an actual project I'd make sure it was a little bit more carefully done. So the idea here is that the washi tape is what's holding the foil and then the heat will go over the top of that. So it is a little bit different. Obviously the limitations are that there isn't, you can't do this on anything else, as in it needs to be flat, it needs to be able to go through your machine. So it's definitely not gonna be ad, able to add foil to everything. But if you've got something like a planner page or a card or something similar, that this is gonna work. It's just a little bit more work than maybe some of the easy glue methods we have tried in the past. Okay, everything's stuck, I think. This is the scary part for me because it always, I've had some really bad fails, <laughs> really bad fails. So I'm going to pull this into the shot a bit more so you can just remove the little heat tool. It's actually not hot at all, but just so that it's there. And we're going to load this in. Now, number one thing, make sure this cord is out of the way because it does get stuck and it's a pain in the bum. So I'm going to hit continue on my screen. Turn the cricket on, that helps. <laughs> and I'm just gonna set this to just um, copy paper because that is what it all that is all it is. We're gonna load this in. And this is the part we hope like hell. We hit go and we see what happens. Okay. I've got my little thing in a little bit too high, so I'm going to push it down a bit further. So I'm going to try that again. Okay, 
So we're all cut out. Now while I was doing that, oh, hold on, just need to put my little heat tool thing back in here just in case. Um, while we were doing that, Ryan and I were just discussing sort of if we're going to do all of the different kinds of paper. I think we'll just do the acetate and the vellum because that's really where I'm interested. I think we've established that if it works on this kind of paper, it'll work on any kind of paper. So this is the downside of using this standard grip is that it's going to curl my paper, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm going to reveal what these all came out like. So this is the foil quill for the foil quill foil. So this is what I expect to work. And there it is. It's good. It's good. There's a little bit missing on the side there, but that's because that's where the washi tape was. So that's okay. You can see that's got a nice little shine to it. And the detail is really good. This is the Couture Creations one. Not the Couture Creations. The Deco Foil. It hasn't worked at all. Absolutely nothing through there. It's okay. We've got a little bit through the Couture Creations one. Not too much. But there is a little bit there. I definitely wouldn't be recommending it. And then we've got the mink. Doesn't work at all. All right, so here we go. Things I'm going to do from now on. We're not going to even try the any of the other three kinds of foil on the acetate or the vellum because it's pretty obvious it doesn't work. So that at least saves us some time there. So I'll put the copy paper off to the side. I'm going to set the vellum and the acetate up on the page and just sort of change some stuff in my settings and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my two sheets set up here. I've got the, the acetate on the top and I've got the vellum on the bottom. We're all stuck and we're ready to go. So I've made the leaves a little bit bigger on my screen um, just so that they are a little bit bigger. We've got a bit more time, more room to play with here. Oh yeah. Thank you, Ryan. He just reminded me I need to take that out. So I'm going to hit continue on the screen. It'll find the makeup. And because the material is not really all that important with this, especially when you're drawing, it's, it's I don't understand why they even ask you. But anyway, so I'll just set it for copy paper again. I want you to know it's making cardstock. And I'm going to hit go. I'm going to leave it on the mat just for now while we pull this bit off. So I'm just going to grab the washi and pull that all off. And Ryan has suggested that we do a rub test on these as well, just to make sure that it's not just sort of sitting on top of the, of the paper. Now I've missed a little bit on that one, but that's all right. So I'll move this. Ooh. This is what you're supposed to do so you don't bend the paper. Just didn't do a very good job of that last one. I'm just going to leave that upside down so it's not sticky. So there you go. That's actually a really good transfer. And it's it's on there. Like that's not coming off. How subtle and beautiful is that? Oh, a whole world of possibilities just opened up. Oh, I really like that. So we know the acetate works. Not the acetate, the vellum works. Let's try the acetate. I'm so excited, this better work. Wow! I want to show you first before I rub it. Like, the acetate's a little bit dirty, but that's all right. Okay, here we go. It's stuck! Yay! We found a way to put, me to put metal, to put foil on acetate, guys. That's really good, actually. I'll do a, I'll do a proper zoom zoom in a second, but... Oh, that's actually, that's really transferred well. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, wrapping up, I think. I think, like, there are lots and lots and lots and lots of different other kinds of mediums we could try this on, but I think we've established that the foil quill foil, like, foil quill foil 
We'll foil onto most things. If it'll foil onto acetate, it's basically going to foil onto anything, in my opinion. Um, but I'm in, I would be interested if you guys had any suggestions. Leave them down below if there's a material you'd like to see me try. But I reckon this is really cool. It's not, it's not going to be for everyone because obviously everyone doesn't have a Cricut or a Silhouette. But if you have one and you're looking for a way to kind of get a little bit more out of it, I think this could work. It would be really great for writing sentiments and stuff. So putting the foil on a dark cardboard would also work. I have done, done this one before, obviously not very well, um, but this was one I was experimenting with just on some blue with some rose gold and it's come up really, really pretty. So there's definitely so much you could do with this. Is it worth it? Yes. Yes, I'm going with yes. I need to play a little bit more to get the full kind of stuff out of it. Like I said at the start, it has been sitting in my stash for a really long time and I'll admit I haven't played with it anywhere near as much as I should have. But I think if I can find a find something, and now that I know it works on acetate, I'm, it's got so many more things I can do. Um, I think there are ways that you can use this that perhaps you can't use any other tool to do so, if that makes sense. I know you can get this at a bunch of different places. I know you can get it at Spotlight. I know you can get it at Craft Online. I will list a bunch down below so you can go and check it out if you like. They are lots of different prices and they do go on sale reasonably often. So just keep that in mind. Other than that, guys, I think that's it for this video. I know it wasn't the most perfect video I've ever done, but it does give you an indication on what does and doesn't work with the foil quill uh, and sort of what you can use it on. Now, I need to point out that this isn't a Cricut or a Silhouette like proper accessory. So there are some warnings online about that it may void your warranty. Just keep that in mind. I don't see how that is going to be a problem, but if you are a little bit more cautious than me and you don't want to do it, just keep that in mind if you are going to grab this one. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for any other foiling videos and also click the playlist at the end if you want to see more foiling videos because I have done a bunch here on my channel. Hope you guys have an absolutely fantastic, fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles. Bye.